so we shall have a lesson of chemistry and we are continuing from where we stopped uh, last time so I will come you all uh, once again uh, meanwhile we can be having uh, someone to first remind us of what we did last time the things we did last time by show of hand you can just raise up your hand so that I can be able to pick you by show of hand please Uh, yes, uh, uh, Leticia. <coughs> Leticia. Yes, teacher. Mm. Could you please remind us of what we did last time in our previous lesson? I request that uh, maybe increase on your volume. I'm not getting you. Eh? Yes, teacher. We spoke about factors that affect the color of the existing elements and the complex methods. How they affect. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's hear from other person. Yes, uh, Joseph. Yes. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Yes, we, we talked about uh, finding the oxidation state over an element. Mm. Then we talked about even the factors that affect the color of the transition elements, metals. Okay. Then we talked about the, mm, the catalytic activities. We gave out the examples on the app. All right. So thank you, Joseph. Uh, before I start, I'm so disappointed in you uh, that uh, you're given work and you don't do it at your age. At your age, you don't know how to, to, to submit in the work. Others, uh, I think you're taking this for fun. I own a good work from one person. Uh, you're behaving as if you're in senior one, senior two, whereby we need to run after you or remind you. Trust me, where we are going, we might not have time to always run after you to submit in the work. And you are we like you to remember this uh, when, uh, when time has passed. All right. So let's continue. Today we want to look at uh, structure of complexes. So our lesson today will be about structure of complexes uh, that is under our topic of transition uh, metals. So we want to see what is a complex, what is composed of a complex, and how can we come up with the structure. So we shall have those steps, uh, those procedures that we need to follow to have a full complex. Uh, before we are just looking at it, but without having the details. But this time around, we shall need to look at the details. I uh, will look at how we can make a structure of a complex and also how we can name a complex. Uh, that's what we are going to do today. And today I want us to pay much attention because some things they need us to see and hear what I'm talking. Uh, you might find that some things are not involved in your notes. Uh, you need to know them from me especially the secret uh, tricks we always uh, uh, deploy when it comes to uh, writing uh, the complexes. So let's first uh, look at how the complexes are uh, represented. Uh, this is something that we looked at before. I've been explaining this for a long time. Uh, where I said uh, the M is the central atom and then the L is the ligand 
then n the number of ligands then z which has got a plus or minus that is the net charge in other words the net charge can either be positive or negative so i hope now that is not something new so where we can as well define it we say m is the central metal ion or central metal atom y l the ligand surrounding the metal ion and n n is the number of ligands or what we can call coordination number of the metal ion and plus or minus z is the charge on the complex or what we can call net net charge so here will be a bit fast because uh, this is something i've been explaining all through we can we look at examples so for example if you have a chromium cation uh, which is symbolized as this chromium cation surrounded by six molecules surrounded by uh, six ammonia molecules the ones we have in the brackets they form a cationic complex they form a cationic complex so how can i write this it means that i can do it like this this is how we can write this uh, uh this complex uh, but we shall have the procedures or the steps which uh make us reach this stage of writing the so these ones are six then we put in the square bracket I remember i told you that i told you that uh, a complex is represented by the square brackets uh, only that we don't have it in writing so this is our complex the one we are having in this example that is how it is written uh, then we also have a neutro atom a neutro metal complex species is also possible when there is no net charge on a complex but has a lone pair of electrons so we shall have we shall have different types of complexes uh, we shall have those ones which are neutral uh, those are the ones without the net charge or the ones we say no net no net charge then we shall have the ones which are positively charged and others which are negatively charged uh, depending on the nature of the ligand that you're having it is the one to give you the the type of the complex that is being uh, formed so here we can have an example of a neutral ligand a neutral complex we can have an example the common one uh, which is a nickel carbonyl uh, nickel carbonyl it is written like this and it has it has no charge and it has no no charge uh, Hillary is asking uh, how do we find oxygen state uh, when the compound has no overall charge uh, it means that if the compound has no overall charge uh, then its overall charge will be zero so assuming that assuming that we have assuming that we have uh, uh, the other compound that I've just shown you if we have that so this is a neutral uh, complex and we are saying it has an overall charge so it will be if i'm looking for the oxidation state of nickel i'll call it x then plus this is a neutral ligand a carbon is a neutral ligand so it has no charge also so it will be x times 
times 4 which gives us the net charge of 0 because there is no charge then we carry out calculations uh, which give us x as a 0 because x times 4 times 0 is 0 or if I had I can have let's say copper uh, copper if I have a compound like that then I'm looking for the oxidation state of copper and I have no overall charge I'll come and say X or Y whatever you call the metal then plus this would be a uh, 6 times the charge on the chloride which is minus 1 then the overall charge is the overall charge is 0 so when it is 0 it will be X plus minus a uh, 6 uh, which gives us a uh, 0 then when we calculate mathematics to be uh, this will be x minus 6 uh, giving us a uh, 0 uh, then we shall get x when you take the 6 the other side after crossing the equal sign then it becomes the positive and I've already told you that when you're calculating for the oxidation state make sure you indicate the sign over the oxidation state so I hope here I've answered you uh, Tabitha, if I saw your first message, you're saying that it is your first time to join this. So, uh, I think um, if I said it is normal not to be following, I'm not wrong. Because we are almost in the middle of our topic, so trust me, you can't get us unless uh, you visit our YouTube channel and you first get the first lessons. So, I request that uh, you first visit the YouTube channel, then you get the first lessons, or you... Uh, you visit the Google Classroom where we always post the lesson notes after here. So on top of the lesson uh, notes, you can also go to a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, then you'll be able to get even the explanations that I gave out. So here, have you got it now? Hillary? Okay. So that was the question from Hillary. Uh, then from there, let's continue. My examples. So here we are giving uh, a neutronic atom. This is what we've been using. Having four carbon monoxide molecules, which forms a neutral complex. So this is the neutral complex because it has no charge. We are calling it a complex because we have put it in the square bracket. We, should, we shouldn't forget that. Uh, that. To show that what we have is a complex, you have to put it in the square bracket. Because we shall reach somewhere whereby we have a complex and another iron attached to the complex. And you need to identify that this part is a complex and the other one is for another radical as we shall see when we move forward. Uh, then here we have the term coordination compound. A term coordination compound, uh, which means a compound containing a species having the characteristics of a metal complex, but capable of independent existence. But capable of independent existence. So the only difference between a metal complex and a a coordination and a coordination compound is that a coordination compound has got some properties of our complex and it can stand on its own or it can be independent whereas a complex cannot that is the difference we shall look at coordination compounds and also the complexes so that we can get to know the differences better uh, then we define a ligand here we are defining those words because we have been talking about them. I've been telling you what they are, uh, but we've never had any written thing to show that they are, uh, to show their definitions. So we are now putting into writing what we've been hearing or what we've been talking about. I'm sure that we've been talking about ligands, and I know we have different uh, memories. Others can get what I say straight away. Others need to go back and revise to understand more. So we are now introducing that second option of putting everything in in writing. Uh, 
Uh, Joshua, you're saying that uh, I should repeat. I don't know from Moya. So a ligand is an atom or group of atoms uh, with negative charge or only pair of electrons uh, that coordinate with a central metal ion or that coordinate with a central metal ion or or an atom so what do we mean when we say an atom when i talk of an atom a ligand can be a chloride or chlorine it can be a bromide or it can be a sulfate so when we say a sulfate now we are bringing in a group of atoms whereby a sulfate is made up of sulfur and four oxygen atoms uh, we have chlorine is only the chloride is only one atom i hope i'm clear there so we are saying with with a negative charge so here we are having a chloride a bromide then a sulfate uh, it can be a nitrate so these are a group of atoms and these are just atoms so all these are ligands but of different nature all on pair of electrons uh, when we say on pair of electrons uh, that's when we introduce the neutral ligands the likes of uh, ammonia the likes of ammonia whereby in an ammonia we have nitrogen uh, that has a lone pair of electrons uh, the likes of a uh, carbonyl or carbon monoxide it has oxygen which has one pair of electrons uh, the likes of water water which also has oxygen uh, that gives us the lone pair of electrons so those ones coordinate with a central metal ion or atom so depending on what you have depending on if you have a metal ion then they will coordinate if you only have an atom then they will also uh, coordinate i remember drawing for you i remember drawing for you a, a structure of uh, a simple complex uh, that one of copper uh, let me write it here yeah, just I've seen your question. Uh, I think I will repeat it. Don't worry. I'll give you more explanation. So just assuming that we have uh, this complex, uh, then with the two plus, I see the structure is like this. Oh yeah, by here we have we have the copper iron. Uh, then we have other four other four ammonia molecules other four ammonia molecules i'm getting the four from here so here we have ammonia remember i told you that the arrow should be coming from that atom that can donate the alone pair of electrons so the arrow must be coming from there for the case of ammonia it must be coming from nitrogen not hydrogen because hydrogen does not have alone pairs of electron so here you start with uh, with ammonia with nitrogen and uh, then i hope you have done this in uh, organic chemistry so that is the simple structure of our complex of copper and that is what i mean so these are coordinate bonds these ones are coordinate bonds these are the ones we are talking about okay then a ligand can be ionic or neutral a ligand can be ionic or neutral uh, we can say it is ionic a Joshua yes it can also be dative we can say it is ionic when the complex has got an net charge or what we call overall charge it can be negative or it can be positive 
And then there we say uh, we say that the ligand is ionic. Then we have the ones which are neutral, which are neutral. So these ones, if they aren't, they have no charge at all. They have no charge at all. And we shall find that the nature of the ligand affects also the nature of the complex, why it is used. If it is a negative ligand, we shall see the effect on the on the on the complex uh, then a metal complex is ionic when it has an net charge on it so like i said if we have a ligand which is negatively charged then we are likely to get a metal complex uh, which is negatively charged okay as we shall keep on expiring so a metal complex species is ionic when it has an net charge on it so when we say ionic it means that we can have it negative or or positive uh, let's look at classification of ligands we have different so we say ligands are classified using the number of atoms on that can donate a pair of electrons. Ligands are classified using the ligand that donate a pair of electrons. If you have what we call the first category is unidented, unidented ligand or what we call monodented ligand. Uh, when we say mono, mono means one as well as uni. Like how we always, if you go to, we have those unisex saloons. Unisex, so you find it is either for only ladies or uh, the men. So mono or uni means that uh, that ligand has only one atom on it that has a lone pair of electrons or that can donate a pair of electron it has only one atom on it for example we have ammonia we have ammonia uh, we have a chloride uh, we have also water like on water we have oxygen only one atom here we have nitrogen only one atom so that's what we mean when we say you need dented or monodented ligand uh, then we say this is one with only one donor atom per molecule this is one with only one molar with only one donor atom per molecule eg we have the chloride we have ammonia and so on is also a dented ligand because it has it is only nitrogen atom that can donate a pair of electrons to the to the metal so here we are giving examples. Uh, we go to polydented. Uh, polydented. We are having the word poly. Uh, the word poly means in uh, the word poly means if you remember how we did polygons, uh, we saw the what? Anybody remembers what a polygon is? Anybody still remembers what is a polygon? I hope this was a very brief uh, question. What is a polygon? No one has defined it. It is a certain figure that is according to Harry. Anybody else? In other words, it has more than one, one side. I can say that it has more than one, one side. So when we say poly, the word poly in lemma means it means many or more than one, more than one. So we say polydented. It means that 
our figure that has got more than one atom that or that is on it it has got more than one atom to that are able to you know donate the electrons so it has more than one they can be two they can be three they can be four so these are ligands with more than one donor atom per molecule and they make more than one bond with the central metal atom or iron so they have more than one donor atom per molecule in other words one molecule can be having more than one one molecule can be having more than one and they make more than one bond with the central metal iron meaning that each lone pair of electrons being donated forms a bond each lone pair of electrons being donated forms a bond So for these ligands, a suffix places poly to indicate the number of donor atoms in such ligands. For these ligands, a suffix replaces poly to indicate the number of donor atoms in such ligands. Uh, can someone tell us what the word suffix means? This word here. Suffix. Of us can even read it as tell us. Uh, yes, Joshua. A suffix is like a common a common group of letters or a common word that is on on uh, on a, on every on every word. That is on every word. Okay, thank you. Another person. You know, we have two words. We have a suffix and I think a, a prefix, something like that. Some of the girls now should come in and help us with English. Every year, girls talk, perform better than boys in English. So let me look for a girl here. Let me look for the future women MPs. Do we have some? All of them are quiet. Hey, we have got a speaker. Yes, Miriam. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, a suffix is a letter or group of letters added to the end of a word. Can I continue? Mm -mm. You are going to put in much English and you confuse us. A suffix is a letter. Yes. No, it's a letter or group of letters added, mm. added to the end of a word to make another word. To make another word. Okay, that is what yes. I wanted. Thank you. Maybe you can also tell us a prefix. There we are. Yes, teacher. You can also tell us a prefix so that we can get another uh, difference. A prefix. Mm. Are you checking the dictionary? Um, a prefix. And for it, for it, it's the opposite of a suffix because it's a group of letters added at the beginning of a word to change its meaning. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for saving the future of Uganda. So, remember, as for a suffix, that is a lot of the words or the group of words that come at the end of, of a word. Then, prefix it comes first. So like how like how we do it in chemistry, under this part, we said that that's the two three, two three donor atom ligands are called by dented. By dented. How does that one come in? So by by means two. 
by minus 2 then try try minus uh, 3 then if there were 4 we would say tetra we would say tetra then if there were 5 we would say penta like that then we are replacing now we are bringing the suffix uh, the suffix of the word dented so if I said by dented it means that that ligand has two donor atoms if I said tridented meaning that that ligand has three uh, ligand uh, has three donor atoms I hope I'm clear so all these ones we are looking at them so that they can help us when it comes to when we come to uh, to naming complexes because we need to know when to use the word dented uh, we need to know when we use the word by we need to know when we use the word try like that then we say that in by dented ligands like i said two bonds formed two bonds per molecule of a ligand are formed with the central metal ion with a central metal ion So if you check, if you check on uh, our example here, uh, this is what we call 1, 2 diamine ethane. It is a diamine because of having two amine uh, molecules there here. So I don't know whether you've done this in your organic chemistry. Then ethane, it is because of having this compound here, or this part which contains two carbon atoms. So one and two, one and two, it is because of the position. It is because of the position of, of the amines. So yeah, the first amine is occupying the first position. Then from the other side, it is occupying the second uh, position. But I'm not going into that. I'm not going into the naming of organic compounds. But what we should know is that uh, this ligand, we are calling it a bidentate because it has two atoms uh, which are able to uh, donate electrons so we have this nitrogen here which has lone pairs of electrons as well as this nitrogen here so they are only two they are only two so we call it a bidentate Uh, now we look at coordination number and molecular formulae of complexes. Uh, coordination number of a metal complex is the number of ligand donor atoms bonded directly to the metal atom. Coordination number is of a metal complex is the number of ligand donor atoms bonded directly to the metal atom. So we have looked at some examples of ligands. And now we are having the definition of the coordination number. I remember at first when I was telling you when we had this kind of thing. Uh, where we said that, uh, where we said that uh, this is Z, then minus. So we had said that this N, this N is the coordination number. But I think we never had the definition in writing. So now it comes. Connection number of a metal a complex is the number of ligand donor atoms bonded directly to the metal atom. Then the molecular formula of a metal complex is written inside square brackets. The molecular formula of a metal complex is written inside the square 
bracket that's why the other side we had something like this uh, when we say square brackets they have to be square not carry brackets not carry uh, brackets so like this uh, then you put you close the square bracket Uh, let's look at some examples where we have this so here you can see that we have our square brackets uh, we have the central metal iron which is chromium we have the ligand the ligand is ammonia uh, then the coordination number is, is six because we have six ligands then the value charge is positive positive three so we have that compound in which the connection number of chromium 3 is 6. So chromium 3, this is the metal, this is the metal iron. We are saying chromium 3 meaning that is charged. And we are saying its connection number is 6 because it has 6 ligands attached to it or coordinated to it. The formula of a neutral complex has a zero net charge. The formula of a neutral complex has a zero net charge. So you can see here there is no charge. And this one we have for chromium, there is a charge. So we can say this is cationic, uh, cationic complex. This is a cationic complex because of having because of having a positive charge. If it was a negative charge, then it would say it has it is an unique complex uh then with this one the one of nickel uh, it has no charge so we say it is a neutral uh, complex uh, if i become too fast you let me know because i'm assuming that i'm very slow but if i am very fast let me know it doesn't break any law and if you have any questions concerning to the things so far we have covered, uh, you should also let me know uh, so that I don't leave you behind. Because what we are looking at now, we shall need to use all of them when it comes to making or writing our own complexes as well as uh, naming them. As well as naming them. So don't allow to be left behind. So let's look at uh, nomenclature of complex ions. Uh, when I saw nomenclature, I mean a naming of complex ions. So we want to look at the naming of complexes. So we want to use all the knowledge, everything we've got from the beginning, uh, to make sure that we are able to name our complex ions so to do that we have the rules uh, which are listed below and each rule matters each rule matters so i'll go slowly even though we don't finish them today but we can finish them anytime but as long as we understand them because if you lose out on the rules then trust me you want to be uh, able to write any correct uh, correct complex so before I start on that do we have any questions so far are there any questions you can use the chat in one minute okay I don't see any questions so I have a feeling that everyone is on that same page. Let me check through my list and see. Can I uh, Rita, 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 Rita and mute. Rita. Uh, Rita, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Mm, what is yeah. what is the coordination number? <coughs> uh, 
a coordination number is the number of ligands surrounding the uh, metal ion. The number of ligands surrounding the metal ion. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me check out another person here. Mwesugwa, Mwesugwa, you can unmute. Yes. Mwesugwa, how are you? I'm fine. How is life? Life is good. Okay, would you mind define for us what is a complex? What is a complex? Iron. <laughs> What is the complex? Are you with us or? Uh, it seems that uh, is looking for answers, but we can have a volunteer. Uh, let's have. Karim, 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 unmute. Karim. Hey, Leticia, your hand has disappeared. How come? Same as Karim is not with us. Yes, Leticia. I'm not hearing you. The complex, hmm. the chemical species. Leticia, I'm unable to hear you. Maybe you can use the chat. Your voice is too low and uh, you're breaking, so I'm unable to hear you. Yes, Emmanuel. A complex is a, a compound which contains a central metal bonded to either iron atoms or molecules through a dative bond. Okay. Uh, thank you. So lastly, I want to check on um, a Judith, Judith and Robert. Judith and Robert. Judith and Robert or Judith and Robert Yes, Judith, how are you? Fine, Are you with Robert or it is just N? It is N yeah, I thought you are two people in one. So I have mm -hmm. a, I have a question for you. Uh, for you. Uh, tell me two categories of ligands. Yes. Two categories. Can you tell us two categories of ligands? Two categories of ligands. categories of ligands yes uh, Judith we are waiting it seems we are able to get to you let's hear from uh, Emmanuel good afternoon teacher yes good afternoon to you teacher mm, I we have a ionic and neutral ligand. We have ionic and neutral ligands. Thank you. Uh. What if I say that we have a unidented and polydented? Sorry. 
Uh, what if I said I have a uh, uni and polydentate ligands? So basically, we mm. have uni and polydentate ligands. Uh, then what you said fall it falls under those ones it falls under those ones that you just mentioned uh hillary you sent me a message but i'm um, unable to interpret it um i really can't read this language uh, this thing this is too much for me can you simplify it yeah really you can simplify the language uh teacher i have so i'm told to find so seriously, I failed to get the question. You write full words. Eh? Why are you writing o, o and S, then M, G? You write full words. Okay, Hillary. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon to you. Hello. Yes, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. What I mean, mm. in case I have a compound and I'm told to find a, in case I have a compound and I'm told to find the oxidation state of one element and the mm. oxidation state of the other, I don't know it. How do I get it? No, because normally, uh, normally these elements, if for example, you meet yourself, if I have uh, this kind of a compound for example if I have this uh, this is potassium permanganate so normally we calculate for the oxidation state of a complex metal of a complex metal because they are the ones which have got variable oxidation states Others have fixed ones. If it is not a transition element. So what I will come, here we shall use, remember we said that an oxidation state, that is the charge. It is the charge on a metal. On a transition metal. So in this case, in this case, for example, our transition metal in this compound is the manganese. So I will need to calculate for that. Oxidation state of manganese. So I know the charge. I know the charge on potassium iron. It is a positive one. That is the valence. Maybe if I use the word valence, it is one. Then uh, for manganese, it's the one we are looking for. So we can call it X. And uh, then for an oxide or oxygen, it is minus two. And we have four. So it is 4 times minus minus 2. Okay. Then the charge, we don't have a charge. So it is, it is 0. So meaning that it will be x plus 1 and then minus 8, uh, which gives us 0. So this is the same as having x minus 7, which gives us 0. Then x meaning that is equal to positive, positive 7. When the negative goes to the other side, the equal sign becomes a positive. So that is how we, we calculate for such. So later on we shall learn how to name these compounds. How we come up with positive 7. So here I can say this is potassium permanganate. Or I can say this is uh, manganate 7. I hope here I have answered your question. Uh, yes. Uh, how should I choose? Uh, Joshua? Yes. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. When uh, we get in the other assignments, the, the, the assignment we did of chemistry, when are you marking it and the result? No, uh, when uh, the, the assignment, I sent it in the Google Classroom and I saw only one person and I marked only one person. But I, I also did, but the marks, now how can I see my graded work? 
the moment you open if i have graded you the moment you open the google classroom then you able to to see the grades but if you okay. haven't then we shall we shall send you a video on how to check for your grades so we are winding up uh then uh, emmanuel yeah teacher yes please what are, what happened if i calculate the proportion sorry what happened if I calculated for oxidation state of potassium? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, potassium is not, it is not uh, a transition element. Mm. So it has only one fixed oxidation state. It won't change. Eh? It will always okay. be one. Eh? Okay. So we calculate for manganese because it is, we are aware that it is able to change its oxidation state. So now we want to confirm which one did it use in this compound but for potassium we are sure it is one to not change so there is no need of calculating for it you get it okay uh some members the reason that's why i wanted to to stop here uh it is because i want us next time to start on this part i want us to look at these rules and we follow them all of them so that's why I was a bit uh, stuck here. So when we come back, I want us to follow the rules that we follow when we are naming complex ions. I didn't want to start then stop in the middle. That's why I stopped here. So when we come next time, we shall start from here. Then we look at how to name these ones. Uh, yes, Davis. Uh, Davis. Davis, Davis. Teacher. Yes, please. I'm new here, so how can I access the content? Okay. Uh, Mr. Kakura, I request that you send the links in the Google Docs, in the chat, so that uh, Davis can be able to, to see where to go. Which link can I send first? Yeah, you already sent. So, no, which link can I send first? I think WhatsApp and also for Google Classroom. I'm sending the one for... But I've already sent it in yes. the chat, the one for WhatsApp. Okay. Let me receive So, Davis I'm said send it check in the chat. Oh, it is. So, one or two questions WhatsApp. and we I'm call sorry. it a day. So, Davis, you're sorted. Any questions? If there is no question, can we have a closing prayer? Joseph. Joseph, the father of Jesus, can lead us in prayer. Let's have the father of Jesus. If the father of Jesus fails, we can have the mother. Uh, the mother has disappeared. Oh, we can have a volunteer. The mother knew that I was coming to her and she disappeared. Come by yourselves and we pray. Good evening, Father. One thank you for this good time you provided us. We want to thank you that you have enabled us to have this lesson. We also thank you for the sponsors that are sponsoring these learning lessons and let their efforts not be in vain. So, Devin, Father, I pray that you bless our teacher who has been with us today and bless all participants who have attended this lesson. Keep us well in amid this, this pandemic and let us meet when we are still alive. We also not forget to pray for our excellence at the end of our level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. Amen. So, thank you, everyone, for this lesson. Uh, let's meet next time and let us please attempt the the assignment.